far, there are 14 candidates that have entered the race for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. And I got a chance to catch up with one of them, former MP and Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, Chris Alexander, at our Edmonton rally earlier this month. I had a chance to talk to Chris about a bunch of different things. And first, I wanted to know what the focus of his leadership campaign is. Well, I, I think it is this jobs agenda. So I mean, everyone in our race is talking about it. I want to focus week. on it, almost to the exclusion of everything else. It's not easy to create jobs in this day and age. It's a competitive world. Trump is going to be fighting for jobs. The Europeans and Asians will uh, take our jobs, and other oil producers will produce the oil we would be producing if we're, if we're not careful, if we're not up to the tax task. How do we create them? Lower taxes, balanced budget, and new markets. We want to hold on to North America, but we got to go after markets in Asia and Europe. I have the international experience to understand what that involves, uh, and the experience in Ottawa of a great conservative government that did great things for this country. We need to do that for the next generation. And being in Alberta, I just had to ask him his thoughts on social licenses and pipelines. What is social license? Social license is an idea in Trudeau's head, and maybe Rachel Nutley's head, about a parallel set of criteria for building pipelines. We have a policy and laws and regulations in this country. It involves the National Energy Board, it involves the rule of law, it involves laws enacted by governments, and it involves independent assessment of the merits of these projects. That's what should govern how we build them and whether we build them. It's not Justin Trudeau's uh, whims or Rachel Notley's ideologies that should govern these things. So yes, we need to work together. Yes, we need to ensure there are benefits for indigenous communities. Yes, we need to protect our environment. But there is no one who convinced me or anyone standing here today that it is safer moving our product by rail through heavily built up areas uh, on a growing scale. Uh, ask the people of Lac Megantic. We know how to build pipelines in this country. We know it's the safest way to go. We know it's the most economical way to go. In Ontario, there's a pipeline that runs through a rural area not far from where I go in the summer. People don't even know it's there. Uh, and that should be the case for all of the pipelines that we know we need in Alberta going east, going west, going south. Let's build them. Let's do it on the basis of Canadian know-how. Uh, let's get that can-do spirit back. and. Put the ideology uh, in the ground where it belongs. And of course, the United States has a new incoming president in Donald Trump. Some of the CPC leadership candidates haven't received this news very warmly. So I wanted to ask Alexander his thoughts on how he would work with the president-elect to maintain the relationship between our two countries. We have to work with a U.S. president, and I think a conservative government would work very successfully with a Trump administration. Uh, we can see that it's going to be a pro-fee market administration. We can see that there are going to be issues on trade, but that there is a common interest between Canada and the U.S. that we can protect and even modernize uh, in terms of the free trade agreement for the decades to come. Uh, and we also see beyond our borders that the world is not looking very stable. There is violence, there is terrorism, uh, and we need a community of interest, a rededication to keeping ourselves safe and making the world a safer place to trade in, to travel in, because we know we need that for our prosperity here in North America. So I think a conservative government could find exactly the right way to deal with, uh, to, to deal very productively with the Trump administration while protecting Canada's interests. Jobs, pipelines, the economy, and our relationship with the U.S. are really big issues that are incredibly important to Canadians. And although some candidates seem to be off message with suggestions of implementing carbon taxes and promoting an unfriendly relationship with Donald Trump, there are a lot of candidates to watch for. The CPC leadership vote will take place on May 27th, 2017. So there's still quite a bit of time to make a decision, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on all of the candidates for you. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Holly Nicholas.
Thanks for watching. Hey, did you have a chance to sign up for our emails yet? If not, click the link to the side so that you don't miss any of our updates.